Hi there, welcome back to my channel. Um, this is going to be a continuation of the mini cot series that I've been doing. So this is part three. If you haven't watched the other two parts, um, go check them out on this link. I'm going to be going through how I made the cot sides uh, with all the railings down each side and then the part where I can put it all together as a dry fit for the first time. Um, so thanks for tuning in. Um, if you like it, drop me a like, comment and subscribe. Um, I'd really appreciate that. Um, and hope you enjoy. I'll see you on the next one. So I started by milling all the oak um, to the right thickness and size uh, before I cut it all into the uh, correct dimensions for the cot sides. Once I'd milled it all up, I spent quite a bit of time um, drawing out all the joints, which ended up being eight mortise and tenon joints. I blitzed most of the waste out with the drill press and uh, got some pretty cool footage, especially of the drill bit going at really slow motion. I thought that was really cool seeing all the shavings fly off. Once I drilled out all the waste, I popped an edge guide on my router and then started cutting a nice straight profile on the edges to reference off when I cut the rest of the mortise out. You can see in the next picture, the mortise is all cut out, but the edges are quite round. So I use a chisel to cut in the corners, uh, tidy the joint up and get it nice and square and crisp. So that was eight mortises, all cut, square, finished, ready for the tenons to be made and fitted. So I use my table saw to rough out all the waste on the tenons and then I knocked it all off. Before using a router to trim as close as I could to the line, I found this the easiest and most accurate way to creep up on the fit uh, to get a nice tight joint um, without any wobbles. I did this for all eight joints, just kept rechecking the fit on each one, um, cutting each one down and eventually I had eight mortise and tenon joints that all fit together uh, really nice and tight, which would form the basic framework for the side rails. Once all the main joinery for the framework of the side rails was finished, I knocked it all together to get a dry fit. Uh, this would allow me to make sure everything was square and still the same shape and size that I needed it to be. So here's a little walk around with the all the joinery at the ends. Uh, got two smaller sides that connect up with the longer pieces and uh, hold everything together. With the framework done, it was now time to move on to making all the rails. So I started out with this rough sawn oak, milled it up again. I say that like it's a chore. I do really love milling wood up. You just see all the grain appear and you just see what it can become. After milling, I cut all the oak down further into lots of little um, pieces and these would start to become the railings. Um, and then once they were all cut to the right size, I started using a round over bit on the router table um, to get a nice curve down all the rails and their final shape. It was really important to get all of these identical because I then made a little jig that fit the rails exactly. So I'd be able to router out um, all the slots for the rails to sit in. I marked out the centers for each rail where it would fit in by clamping the top and bottom rails together and drawing lines across where I wanted the slots for the rails to be routed in. So here's how I use this jig. Basically I slid along the rail I clamped it at the center of each line that I'd marked and then I routed out a profile. Once I'd done this, I was able to use some larger router bits just to get it to the correct depth. Once 
once I got to this stage, I still don't think I could believe it was all going together. Um, the rails just seemed to slot in. They were really tight, um, but that would help with no rattling later on. Uh, so I slotted all the rails in, whacked the top down, uh, so it all fit together, and then put the two ends on, which secured each piece. I then did a little woodworker dance off camera when it all fit together, uh, which I'm not going to show you. I got both sides done exactly the same like this, so I had two rails all ready to go and then did a little dry fit just to make sure everything was square. I could now start adding all the shaping in which included a lot of the round overs around all the edges and I also decided to add these little half rails to the ends just to soften the transition between the rails and the main framework. All the shaping and joinery done, it was time for loads and loads of sanding. I can't believe how much time it all took to sand working through all the grades, but I did get there in the end and had all the pieces ready for a dry fit and glue up. I've learnt doing this, glue ups require a lot of patience, pre-planning and then uh, just get on with it. Uh, so I fixed all the rails in first and then glued the two ends on. Once the two ends on I was a bit more relaxed and I could do the uh, drawboard mortise and tenon joints at the end. These are exactly the same as in my previous video with the cot ends so if you haven't already seen it go and check them out. Uh, it's a really cool way of securing the joint. I did a final uh, dry fit test and measured corner to corner to check everything was square, everything was the right dimension and, and it would fit a standard uh, cot mattress in it. Thanks for watching, join me on the next one, I'll be going through making the cot base, uh, applying the final finish, Rubio Monocoat, and then assembling it uh, ready for the new arrival in the baby room. Uh, I'll see you on the next one.